Hello, I welcome you all in this presentation related with the subject fundamentals of the manufacturing process and we are talking about the sheet metal operations. In the previous presentation, I have talked about the mechanism of the shearing which is used for uh, metal cutting in the sheet metals. Uh, here uh, we I have talked about the role of the penetration and the clearance. So, uh, apart from this, we also need to look into the force and uh, uh, the shear force which is required and the power consumption in the shearing and thereafter we will see some of the operations related with the shearing uh, like uh, shearing based uh, operations, uh, the punching, blanking, nibbling, notching, shaving etc. So, those uh, things will be uh, seen. So, uh, we will go through these slides, some of these slides first uh, regarding the effect of the clearance. So, this is what I have already said that in the shearing we use one die and punch, there is upper blade and the lower blade. When the punch moves down, the strain is generated into the sheet metal and when it crosses the cracks nucleate both the sides here and then, then their propagation leads to the shearing and the separation of the material. So, here when the clearance is uh, optimum, then what we get and when the clearance is improper, then what we get. So, this is the case when the clearance is optimum, then all around the circumference, the cracks will be propagating from both the edges from the lower uh, side uh, of the punch and the upper side of the die and here into the sheet metal and this they will be meeting at the center when the clearance is optimum. When the clearance is tight then it will be leading to the secondary shear where the cracks will be growing from both the sides but they will not be meeting at the center. So, this leads to the very rough and rugged surfaces when the clearance is too loose means the gap is too wide, it is not an optimum one, then it will be leading to the more disc shaped deformation and uh, uh, so that will also not be the required one. So, this is the kind of the secondary shear edge which will be produced and it will be more rougher as compared to what will be produced, what roughness uh, will be produced when the clearance is optimum. Spring back is another uh, phenomena where in um, spring back and the cold welding, these are the two another uh, important things. Uh, like uh, in case of the, the spring back and the cold welding, spring back and cold welding, these are the two different phenomena like uh, this is the punch when it comes in contact with the sheet metal. So, if the sheet metal is soft, punch puts in lot of the compressive stresses compressive force onto the sheet metal and because of this sometimes the sheet metal gets embedded with the surface of the punch uh, and even under the low temperature conditions. So, this is what is called cold welding and because of this cold welding the uh, even after the shearing the slug may remain attached with the uh, with the uh, punch or the after removal the die uh, may get uh, or the slug may get attached with the uh, slug also. So, these are the two issues. So, because of this there will be the problem of the disposing off of the slug material which is will be which is being removed. So, we need to work extra like say this is the die. So, because of the cold welding the slug may remain get attached with the die itself. So, we need to push it down. We need to work extra in order to dispose it off properly. Similarly, to, uh, to separate this uh, the slag from the punch surface also, uh, we need to put in the strippers so it can separate the slag from the die. So, these are the two issues related with the cold uh, welding wherein uh, the slug which is being formed or scrap being formed remain attached with the punch or the slug is getting attached with the die itself. So, it is a disposing of uh, becomes difficult. So, a stripper is used for the suppression of the punch from the slug or the sheet metal. Uh, spring back is another effect 
it is basically related with the say this is the die so whatever uh, the 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 uh, whatever the slug is formed uh, we have seen it has a particular geometry at the ends like this so this is the kind of geometry and this portion will uh, be passing through the uh, the die uh, so uh, because of the spring back effect whatever is the bending effect is there on the slug that uh, uh, that uh, the slug gets straightened as uh, it gets a space into the die especially in the lower portion of the die so it may get uh, remain attached uh, with that another thing uh, is that um, it affects the size of the uh, the blank as well as the size of the hole which is being produced so the if we see the geometry of the hole it this is the kind of uh, the hole edge which is produced so this portion actually remains under the uh, elastic deformation in course of the uh, shearing so when the punch goes off this portion gets straightened like this and because of this kind of the straightening the hole diameter gets reduced similarly in case of the slug uh, straightening leads to the increase in diameter of the slug so spring back effect has the two effects one is the reduction in the dia of the hole and increase in the dia of the blank or the slug which is being produced slug or a scrap which is being produced so these are the two things which we can see here uh, the cold welding when the soft metals are processed so it uh, cold welding leads to the uh, the joining between the punch and the sheet or the welding of the fracture surfaces and the slug and die so this is the slug and die they can also get the cold welded or the punch can get welded with the slug itself spring back effect is due to the elastic deformation so due to the spring back effect um, the the slug may remain uh, attached with the die itself so it needs more uh, stroke for uh, clearing it or for pro pro proper disposing of similarly force for pushing is needed and uh, it also affects the die and the hole diameter so the hole diameter due to the spring back effect gets uh, reduced while the diameter of the blank is increased a stripping uh, is needed primarily for the separation of the punch from the die so that it can easily be cleared this is the diagram which shows the kind of the cutting force variation in course of the shearing when the uh, clearance is optimum then what we can see this increase in force is very clear and it's vertical and uh, then uh, there is no this is the case when there is no secondary shear so uh, uh, this is uh, this is how the force varies in case of the shearing uh, when the clearance is optimum this is the kind of compressive force or the strain which is generated the hump curve is obtained when the clearance is low and in this case secondary shear takes place so the variation in the force is uh, like say will have the slope and it will have some kind of deviation also in the curve suggesting the occurrence of the secondary shear and when the curve is angled indicating the too tight clearance this is also case secondary shear is present but it is not uh, measurable in this case the, the variation in the, the force is continuous uh, as a function of time and then it starts decreasing for calculation of the shear force uh, force which is required for the shearing purpose um, we need to consider certain things which will help to determine the magnitude of the shear force and the work required for the same so uh, like uh, this is the strip in the top view in the front view we will see the strip in this form and if we use the punch of this diameter and uh, say this is the punch of a particular diameter d p so 
uh, the hole of this size is created and if we see the punch is of the square size then uh, size uh, like a then so these are the two cases so in this case uh, the punch is of the uh, circular section uh, then it will be producing a hole the corresponding hole like this in the strip and uh, uh, in case of the square punch section it will be also producing the square hole so if you have to calculate the force required for shearing for these two cases then what we need to determine uh, what we need to do is shear force for making these holes will can be obtained through the the shear strength of the material multiplied by the shear area what is the shear area she shear area shear area is obtained from the perimeter of the cut perimeter of the cut so which in this case is the pi dp this is the diameter of the punch or diameter of the hole which is being produced uh, into the the thickness of the seat thickness of the seat so here the pi dp multiplied by t if the t is the seat thickness uh, while in this case so this is how the shear area can be determined and for the shear force we need to just fs shear force so perimeter of the cut pi dp multiplied by t is the sheet thickness into fs is the shear strength of the material so if we use these we can calculate the shear force which will be acting while neglecting the frictional effects if they are there in this case the the shear area uh, is uh, shear area can be obtained through the perimeter of the cut into the thickness of the sheet so perimeter of the cut is actually this is the square section so 4 into a and the thickness of the sheet is t so this is this will be the shear area and uh, to calculate the force shear force we need to multiply the shear area with the shear strength of the material or shear strength of the material so that we can get the shear force we do not use the tensile strength of the material for the shearing purpose now if we have got the shear force then using this we can determine the work to be done for the shearing work for shearing then force multiplied by the distance through which the force is to be applied for the shearing and that the distance for which uh, the force is to be applied for the shearing uh, becomes equal to the the depth of the penetration so say this is the depth of the penetration which is basically the sum of the rollover depth or the deformation depth plus the burnishing depth so some of these two is used as a penetration so penetration depth is to be so here we will be using the penetration which is to be used it is a it is expressed as a percentage of the six seat thickness so if we use the shear force and multiplied by the penetration then we will get the work required for the shearing so here we will consider one uh, example now so say uh, uh, one uh, square uh, a hole is to be sheared shearing of the hole uh, of the rectangular section rectangular section in steel plate or steel sheet is to be done steel sheet is say of the 4 mm and uh, the penetration required is for this penetration required is uh, say 20 percent then uh, and the shear strength of the material is say 400 MPA then how to calculate the the 
shear force and the work required for the shearing. So, in this case the rectangular hole say like this is to be obtained of dimension say 50 into the 100 mm. So, uh, the length of uh, the perimeter of the cuts for the shear force what we have to do? Shear force is equal to the shear area multiplied by the shear strength. So, shear area for this case is uh, like uh, uh, 50 plus 100 into the 2 multiple. So, this is the perimeter of the cut and then thickness of the sheet we have to multiply. So, uh, this will give us the shear area. This is the perimeter of the cut and this is the sheet thickness multiplied by shear strength which is say 400 MPa. So, what it will give us? So, 150 into 2 into 4. So, 300 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 400. So, this will give us 48 raised to the power 4 Newton. So, the work required for the shearing is like shear force multiplied by the penetration. So, uh, 48 multiplied uh, by 10 to the power 4 into the penetration is 0.2 multiplied by 4 is the sheet metal thickness. So, on solving this we can get the work required in Newton mm. So, this is what we can solve further 48 multiplied by uh, 0.8 into 10 to the power 4. This will be the answer for the work to be done for the sharing purpose. So, here uh, now we will see uh, th this is what has been shown uh, with the help of the diagrams. Uh, we know that the shear strength of the different metals uh, is well established. So, this is what we can see shear strength of the different metals like for lead it is in 3500 lbs uh, per square inch. Uh, for aluminum it is 8 thousand um, lbs per square inch and this can be converted in the MPA and uh, so likewise the for the different metals the different shear strength uh, are there and which can be used for calculating the shear force. So, shear force is obtained through the shear area and the shear strength the shear area and shear strengths are used to determine the force required for shearing. Basically, it uses the uh, the shear area is obtained through the this, this is the plane of the shear and which is obtained through the shear force is shear force multiplied by the shear area. Shear area is basically parameter of the cut into the sheet metal thickness. So, this is the parameter of the cut multiplied by the sheet thickness. So, in this case this is a uh, simple sheet length of the this is the, the perimeter of the cut multiplied by the sheet thickness. A perimeter of the cut in this case will be sum of all these sides multiplied by the sheet thickness. So, work for the shearing can be obtained like this one other example. Uh, work for the shearing is the force multiplied by the distance through which force uh, uh, must act for the shearing purpose. So, force multiplied by the penetration which is expressed as a percentage of the sheet thickness. So, for cutting a square hole of the 100 mm side in the sheet metal of 2 mm thickness having the shear strength of the 500 MPa while the penetration requirement is 20 percent. So, shear force can be obtained through the uh, square hole uh, multi means side is A. So, what we will be doing side multiplied by 4 this will give us the perimeter of the cut multiplied by the sheet metal thickness will give us give us the shear area and sh multiplied by the shear strength of the material. So, we will get the shear force which uh, is coming out say 400,000 Newton. So, if uh, the, it is multiplied with the penetration required. So, penetration is 0.2 multiplied by the sheet metal thickness. So, this will give us the work required. It is uh, 160,000 Newton mm. This is how we can calculate the force required for the uh, oh sorry work required for the sharing purpose. Now, uh, now what are the different operations which are used uh, through the shearing mechanism so that some useful uh, uh, shapes geometries can be 
generated. So, that is what we will be seeing through some of the sharing operations. So, sharing operations are uh, like blanking is one which involves the shearing, punching is uh, another, nibbling is uh, third, uh, notching and uh, shaving. So, these are the some common uh, shearing based uh, uh, sheet metal operations. So, what we do in case of the blanking, like say this is the die and here is our punch and between the die and punch sheet metal is placed. So, when uh, the punch acts onto the die, uh, what we get basically the sheet metal with the sheet metal with a hole of this kind and one small piece of the metal is removed. So, this is the like say the left out metal and this is the uh, the blank which is produced. So, the in, in the blanking basically purpose purpose is to produce to produce a small piece of the metal sheet of required size and shape so that it can be further processed for making any usable good. Uh, on the other hand, punching is also the same thing, but here objective is not to produce this blank, objective is to make the hole in the sheet metal. So, like if we have one big strip and we have to make a cut of this kind and this if this one is used for processing further this is our product then it will be termed as a blanking and if after making the cut if the hole of this particular shape is produced then it is called punching so only the difference in the punching and blanking is in terms of is in the terms of the output so in case of the punching goal is to make the hole while in case of the blanking goal is to cut the small piece of the metal which can be produced uh, be processed further for making some usable goods. So, this uh, is what is the difference in the punching and the blanking. So, if we see here uh, for the blanking purpose process of obtaining a small piece of the metal from the strip uh, from the sheet metal by cutting or shearing uh, from the stock with the help of punch and uh, uh, the, the removed strip is called blank which can be used for further processing uh, to make uh, usable goods while in case of the punching, punching is similar to the blanking objective is to make the hole and the removed strip here whatever material comes out as a result of the punching that is just a scrap. So, for the purpose of the since the punching and blanking both can be performed through uh, both are performed using the shearing, but th there is a difference in the size of the uh, size uh, like which factor will be governing the size of the blank and which one will be governing by the uh, 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 which will be governing uh, which factor will be affecting the size of the hole. So, if objective is to have the hole through the punching then it is the punch diameter which is controlled and then clearance is given additionally over and above. So, basically the punch diameter plus 2 C is given with the help of uh, for, for making the uh, hole by punching while well, in case of the blanking the so basically punch governs the inner cut size. While in case of the blanking, uh, the die diameter for uh, for the blanking, basically die diameter is controlled, and then the clearance is made negative from the die diameter. So basically, clearance the die is made of the larger diameter for the blanking, while the suitable clearance is given to the punch. So, if we see here the for the blanking, uh, for the blanking, the blanking punch diameter is, uh, uh, this, is this is a blanking die diameter is the dB for the blanking purpose and uh, the punch diameter is just means it is reduced uh, by the 2C value 
uh, for giving the clearance. So, the, the blanking die diameter is dB and the punch diameter for the blanking purpose is uh, uh, is of uh, is made of the smaller size by the 2 C value C is the clearance while well, for making the punch uh, for punching purpose for making the hole like say the punch diameter corresponds to the diameter of the uh, punch means the punch diameter governs the diameter of the hole and uh, the hole die diameter so the uh, diameter of the die for punching purpose is obtained through the di diameter of the punch plus the twice of the C. So, here uh, the clearance is given and over and above to the die and here the in case of the blanking uh, the uh, punch is made smaller and uh, by the 2C value as compared to the blanking die diameter and uh, uh, in case of the punching uh, the die is made larger by the 2C value with respect to the punch diameter. So, which one is given clearance uh, that will be governed by the kind of operation which is to be performed. This is what uh, we can see that when there is a sheet metal is not gripped properly in that case we get a very uh, rough edge having the de deformed zone, burnished zone, fracture zone and the burr but uh, due to the little movement of the sheet metal in course of the punching but when the punch uh, when the sheet metal is properly gripped during the shearing then we get very clean square edge and all these zones are of the very small size so very clean and a smooth edge is produced when the punching or the blanking is carried out with the proper gripping of the sheet metal so there these are the some of the operations uh, related with the shearing trimming is uh, primarily used for uh, removing the extra material uh, spread out near the parting line or the draw forging or the die casting so like say when uh, we go for the forging uh, then the upper and lower half may be leading to the uh, remo uh, formation of the some additional flash at the parting line or uh, in case of the casting also cop and drag uh, case when the two parts are used some extra material gets deposited in case of the casting near the parting line. So, all these extra materials need to be removed and for this purpose it will be placed over the die and then punch will be applied so that all this extra material is removed this one is called trimming so trimming is basically removal of the extra material which has been deposited in the component made by the forging or by the casting so removal of the flash or removal of the extra material deposited at the parting line through the with the use of the punch and die is called trimming it also involves the shearing process Another one is uh, nibbling. In case of the nibbling, particular profiles are generated into the sheet metal. So, here this uh, is a sheet metal in the top view. So, what we do? We apply, we need to make the cut in a particular profile like this. So, what we will be doing? Sequentially, punch and die will be used for making the successive cuts like this. So, this is basically the shearing, but successive uh, shearing is carried out along a particular line so that the uh, a particular strip in a desired profile can be produced. So, this kind of uh, operation is called uh, nibbling, primarily used for cutting the sheet of a specific profile. Uh, in case of the notching, notching is about removal of the material from the sides uh, and this is primarily used to facilitate the folding of the folding and bending of the sheet metal. So, if particular uh, the strip is to be folded then what we do we make a very small cut at the side like this. So, the cuts are made at the edges of the seats to facilitate the bending, uh, drawing and folding of the seats. So, if the purpose is to make uh, 
to make a small cut at the edges and the sides uh, with the help of the die and punch so that it can be bent and it can be drawn and it can be folded then for that it is uh, termed as so such kind of operation is termed as nibbling so these are the operations which has uh, been shown in these diagrams like the shaving is another one where uh, the rough uh, cut surfaces in uh, the normal sheared surfaces have the rough edge like this so in order to make the edges very clean uh, the nose shaving is carried out so shaving is basically s h a v i n g shaving is a shearing one where very close control close uh, uh, clearance is used so that uh, such kind of uh, the rough edge can be removed uh, so basically making the clean and uh, clear cut edge uh, is called the saving uh, these are the operations which have been shown here the gap between the punch and the die is very close so the rough cut edge of the sheet metal is removed and very clean clear square cut edge is produced in case of the saving uh, this is the trimming which has been shown schematically this is the job having the extra material deposited either as a result of the flesh formed during the forging or uh, extra material deposited at the parting line during the casting so this is removed with the help of punch and die punch move is down so this portion is sheared off and uh, any extra material which is deposited at the parting line in form of the flesh that is removed and nibbling as i have said uh, the sequentially the number of cuts are made in a particular profile so that the seat of the suitable profile is produced in case of the nibbling this is also cutting uh, means cutting performed using the shearing principle but along a particular profile this is the notching where in the cut is made at the sides of the plate and the edges so that uh, it can help in proper folding bending and the drying of the sheet metal now here i, I will uh, summarize this uh, presentation in this presentation i have talked about how to calculate the shear force how to calculate the work done in the shearing and what are the common shearing operations like punching blanking uh, nibbling notching uh, trimming etc uh, thank you for your attention